two minutes past three central european time um welcome back to the one world probability seminar um as usual i just want to point you towards the web page which gives you further information about um, how you can register for the weekly email which informs you who's speaking and where to link to um, this week's speaker we have two speakers uh, the first of which is Nina Holden from ETH Zurich and she's going to speak about card embedding of random planar maps. Thank you very much Nina. We can't hear you Nina. <laughs> I'll unmute you. There we go, I've unmuted yeah, you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, so first I would like to thank uh, Andreas and Mike for organizing this series of, uh, uh, of seminars uh, and also to everyone for, uh, for coming. Uh, yeah, so we'll be talking about Cardi embedding of uh, random planar maps. Um, so, uh, so in this talk, uh, we will be considering uh, two models for uh, random surfaces. Uh, we'll be considering uh, random maps and uh, level quantum gravity. Uh, so as we will see, a uh, random planar map uh, is a canonical model for a discrete uh, random surface, uh, which has been uh, studied in, for example, uh, probability, uh, theoretical physics, combinatorics, and uh, geometry. Uh, Liouville quantum gravity, uh, on the other hand, is a natural model for a continuum uh, random surface, which has its roots in the physics literature. Uh, and the main result I want to present uh, is a scaling limit result, uh, which is saying that in a certain sense, uh, the random planar map uh, is converging to a Liouville quantum uh, gravity surface uh, when its size uh, goes to infinity. Uh, so planar map. Uh, it is graph uh, drawn on a sphere, uh, viewed modulo continuous uh, deformations. Uh, for example, uh, these two planar maps uh, you can see here, uh, they are considered to be the same uh, since we can get from one to the other by continuously deforming uh, the edge in uh, red. Uh, these two planar maps, on the other hand, are not considered to be the same. Um, again, we can get from one to the other by moving the edge in, in red, uh, but this deformation is not considered to be uh, continuous. Uh, a triangulation is the planar map where all faces have uh, three edges. Uh, for example, the map shown in the left part of the figure uh, is an example of uh, a triangulation. Um, if we're given some natural number n, uh, there are finitely many uh, triangulations which have exactly n uh, vertices. Uh, and when we work with uh, random planar maps, uh, we will assume that our planar map has been chosen uniform at random from such a finite collection of uh, maps. Uh, so planar maps, uh, so, so the study of planar maps uh, goes back to uh, the combinatorics literature uh, in the 60s, uh, where Tatmulin and others uh, proved enumeration formulas uh, for planar maps. Uh, and later they have been studied in uh, many different parts uh, of both math and uh, physics. Um, for example, people realize that certain uh, matrix integrals uh, can be expressed in terms of uh, sums over uh, planar maps. Um, and geometers use planar maps uh, to approximate uh, continuum uh, surfaces. Um, and in recent years, there has been a large interest uh, among probabilists uh, in uh, studying the geometry of large uh, random planar maps. Um, so another, uh, another relevant application for us is in string theory and conformal field theory, uh, where random planar maps uh, was used as models for uh, random surfaces. Uh, okay, so uh, so next I want to give uh, a quick introduction to uh, Liouville quantum gravity, uh, but first I will give um, uh, give a short introduction to the Gaussian free field, uh, starting with the discrete uh, Gaussian free field. Um, so we consider some uh, rescaled uh, version of uh, Z two uh, restricted to uh, the unit um, rest restricted to the unit square. Uh, if we have a function uh, defined on the vertices uh, of this lattice, uh, then we can define it Hamiltonian by considering the sum of the squared uh, differences of adjacent of the values uh, at adjacent uh, vertices. Um, the discrete Gaussian free field uh, is a random function uh, such that the probability density uh, relative to the product of the Bag measure is proportional to e to the power minus uh, the Hamiltonian. Uh, if we fix the boundary data to be equal to zero, uh, then we get uh, the zero boundary uh, GMF. 
Um, so from this definition of the GFF, it's possible to deduce uh, that if we consider some fixed point Z uh, in the bulk, uh, then this will be a normal random variable. And it will be a normal uh, random variable with mean zero and with uh, variance, which is uh, logarithmic in, in N. And there is also some covariance um, uh, between uh, different uh, points, uh, which is logarithmic. Um, so one way to define the continuum Gaussian free field uh, is to say that this is the limit of the discrete uh, GFF uh, when n goes to infinity. Uh, so we see that um, if we consider the discrete GFF, then the value uh, at any fixed point uh, is diverging uh, because variance uh, is diverging. Uh, so therefore, um, it's not possible to make sense uh, of this continuum uh, Gaussian free field uh, as a function. Uh, but the Gaussian free field uh, is well defined um, as a generalized function or uh, a distribution. So it's not possible to evaluate the GFF uh, pointwise, but it is, for example, possible to integrate it against some uh, smooth test function. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so a small uh, side remark is that uh, the field which is arising in the scaling limit results uh, that I will present later, uh, uh, so that's actually not exact uh, GFFs, uh, so instead, it is some uh, variance of uh, GFF, um, which can be obtained by starting out with a GFF, then adding some uh, random continuous function, and then doing some absolutely continuous uh, reweighting of uh, the probability measure. Um, okay, so uh, next I want to introduce uh, LQG. Uh, so to do that, um, we first assume that h uh, is some smooth function defined on the unit square, and that gamma is some uh, parameter between 0 and 2. Uh, so given h and gamma, uh, we can define a Riemannian uh, manifold uh, by considering e to the power uh, gamma h uh, times, uh, times the standard Euclidean metric. Uh, so in other words, we have, uh, we have a surface where uh, areas are locally rescaled by e to the power gamma h, and distances are locally rescaled by uh, the square root of this. Um, so gamma level quantum gravity, uh, it is uh, the theory of surfaces we get uh, if we let H be uh, the Gaussian free field. Uh, so since uh, the Gaussian free field is a distribution and not uh, a function, uh, it's not obvious how to make a rigorous sense uh, of this uh, object. Um, uh, yeah, um, but what one uh, can show um, is not obvious uh, what e to the power a distribution is. Uh, but what one can show uh, is that several uh, observables of the surface uh, can be defined in a rigorous way. Uh, for example, it's possible to rigorously construct uh, the area measure uh, associated with uh, the surface. Uh, so the idea is that uh, when one considers some uh, regularized version, uh, h sub epsilon uh, of, uh, of h, uh, then, um, then we'll use uh, so this regularized version is, 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 um, uh, is a continuous function, so one can use it to define an area measure. Uh, and it's possible to show that this area measure is converging uh, when this regular is sent to, uh, to zero. Um, very recently, uh, it was also proved uh, that it's possible to construct uh, a distance function uh, in, a, a, in a similar uh, manner. Uh, so, so heuristically, uh, the distance uh, between two points, uh, z and uh, w, it is obtained by integrating the exponential of the GFF uh, along uh, a path connecting the two points, uh, and then take the interim uh, over all such paths. Uh, so this, uh, so the construction of this uh, error measure is a classical uh, result, um, and similar results can be found all the way back to the 60s. Uh, but, but the construction of this distance function uh, was only completed uh, last year. Um, okay, um, so uh, so the level quantum gravity uh, error measure mu, um, it is non-atomic and. Uh, and any open set has positive mass uh, almost surely, uh, but it's also a very fractal measure, uh, which is singular with respect to uh, the Lebesgue measure. Uh, so in the right part of the figure, you can see some illustration of the LQG area measure. Uh, heuristically, you can think of the different colors uh, as showing uh, the density of, uh, of the measure relative to uh, Lebesgue measure.
Okay, so uh, we have seen these uh, two models for uh, random surfaces, um, random planar maps, and uh, an evil quantum gravity. Uh, so both of these surfaces were studied by uh, physicists uh, in the 80s. Uh, and in the physical literature, uh, the planar maps are viewed as uh, discrete uh, versions of uh, level quantum uh, gravity surfaces. Uh, so it is implicitly assumed in much lit literature uh, that the planar maps are converging in some sense to LQD uh, when their size goes to infinity. Uh, so this, uh, um, uh, so this uh, re uh, conjectural relationship between the two surfaces were used for several uh, purposes. Uh, for example, it was used to um, predict or calculate the dimension of certain uh, random fractals and exponents for statistical physics models uh, via a formula known as the KBZ formula. Uh, so later, mathematicians uh, managed to confirm uh, rigorously predictions made by the physicists in, in this way, uh, using completely different methods. And there were also uh, certain variants of the KPC formula, which were uh, rigorously proved. Uh, so these, these results uh, give some uh, hint that there is a rigorous uh, relationship uh, between the planar max and uh, LQG. Um, so the physicists, they, uh, they somehow understood that these two uh, surface models uh, are the same. Um, but, uh, but for mathematicians, uh, it, has been, uh, it has been a mystery to understand their ideas for uh, at least 10 years. Uh, so the first thing we can ask as, as mathematicians is, uh, what does it even mean for uh, a planar map uh, to converge? Um, and there are at least uh, three different uh, senses or uh, topologies uh, in which a planar map uh, can converge. Um, so, for example, it's possible to say that um, a planar map is converging as uh, a metric space. Uh, so a planar map is a metric space uh, if we equip it with a graph distance, um, and uh, planar maps have been proved uh, to converge as uh, metric spaces for what is known as a gromov hausdorff uh, topology uh, by Lugal Mirmont and, uh, and others. Uh, and the limiting object is some uh, random uh, metric space uh, which is known as, um, as the Brownian map. Uh, a second notion of convergence is, is given by uh, considering some statistical physics model uh, on the planar map um, and then show a convergence of, this, um, uh, of, uh, of certain observables uh, of, this, um, of this model um, uh, as, the, as the size of the planar map uh, goes to infinity. Uh, so this notion uh, of convergence has been proved for uh, planar maps in, in several universality classes. Uh, but the precise definition is not so important for the purpose of, uh, of this talk. Uh, a third notion of convergence is given uh, by convergence of uh, the conformal structure uh, of the planar map. Uh, so this notion of convergence is maybe uh, the notion of convergence which is um, most closely related uh, to the original physics papers. Um, and the main result uh, of the talk um, is a uh, first uh, convergence result for the conformal structure of uh, uniformly sampled uh, planar maps. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is that I want to uh, precisely state uh, the result that we, that we proved. Um, so we start out by uh, considering a planar map, uh, M sub n. Uh, so this map has uh, n vertices, and uh, in our result, we also assume that our map has a boundary, um, which has a given length, uh, approximately root n. Uh, so m sub n is, is a uniformly sampled uh, triangulation of, of this type. Uh, so then um, we, uh, we embed uh, this planar map uh, into the anacollateral uh, triangle. Uh, so this means that we draw the planar map in some exquisite way in the equilateral triangle. Uh, so in the left figure, uh, we're just considering a planar map, which is some combinatorial object, uh, which is defined modulo uh, continuous deformations, uh, while in the middle figure, we have drawn this planar map in some exquisite way uh, in the equilateral triangle, such that each vertex has a specific uh, location in the equilateral uh, triangle. Um, so the particular uh, rule uh, that we use uh, that we use uh, to make this drawing uh, or embedding, uh, I call it. Uh, so, so, we, so we call it uh, the Cardi embedding. Um, so I will not. So I will uh, define. Um, I, I will define the Cardi embedding in a few minutes. Uh, but for now, I will just mention that the idea of, of our embedding 
uh, is to use properties of uh, percolation uh, on the planar. Uh, so when we draw uh, our planar map uh, in the equilateral uh, triangle, uh, then we get some uh, area measure views of n uh, in the equilateral triangle. Uh, so we know that the total number of vertices is n. We give each vertex a mass, uh, 1 over n. And the area of some subset of the equilateral triangle is simply the mass of the vertices, which are contained in uh, that set. Uh, then we also let uh, d sub n um, uh, be a metric or a distance function in T. Uh, so in the equilateral triangle, which is defined such that the distance uh, between two vertices is uh, proportional to uh, the graph distance. Uh, then we let mu um, be the level quantum gravity area measure in the equilateral triangle, and we let d uh, be the associated uh, metric. Uh, and then uh, our result uh, is saying that in uh, this setting, um, mu sub n is converging to, uh, to mu, uh, and d sub n uh, is converging to d. Uh, okay, and uh, yeah, so uh, the topology of convergence is here that mu is converging weakly and uh, d is converging uh, uniformly. Um, so I should also mention uh, that in uh, this result, you see that um, we consider that when we defined level quantum gravity, we had the parameter gamma. Uh, and uh, so in, in our result, then this parameter gamma uh, is equal to the square root of eight thirds. So this particular value uh, of gamma is playing a special uh, role um, and is often, and level quantum gravity with this uh, value of gamma is often called a uh, pure LQG. So that's uh, the variant of LQG arising in our uh, results. Uh, yeah, uh, so here it's just stated precisely that mu sub n, and that, that mu is converging weakly and uh, d is converging uh, uniformly. Uh, okay, so uh, before I define uh, the card embedding, I will also uh, state uh, another result, which is following, um, which is following from uh, the proof of uh, the first result. Um, so, we, uh, so as before, we consider uniformly uh, chosen triangulation uh, with a given number of vertices in the interior and on the boundary. Uh, then we are picking uh, four edges, uh, A, B, C, and D. Uh, uniformly random from the boundary of uh, the map. Um, and then uh, we let P sub n uh, denote the probability that if we consider percolation uh, on the planar map, then there is uh, a blue crossing, uh, which is connecting the boundary arc AB uh, and the boundary arc uh, CD. Uh, so this is the probability, which we view as a function of the planar map uh, with the four marked points. Uh, so it is a probability, uh, uh, which is uh, so where we condition on the planar map with the four mark points and uh, where, we, where we average over the randomness of uh, the population. Um, and we can show that uh, when the planar map, um, so when n goes to infinity, uh, then this random variable, uh, piece of n, uh, is converging in law. Um, yeah, uh, so uh, in conformal geometry, there is something known as uh, extremal distance. Uh, and one reason that uh, this random variable, piece of n, is interesting um, is because it can be used to define some notion of extremal distance uh, for this uh, map with four marked uh, boundary points. Uh, so the extremal distance uh, of a surface with four marked boundary points is uh, saying something about the conformal properties of, of that surface. Uh, so convergence of this random variable, piece of n, is some first result, which is which is hinting that uh, hinting that uh, the conformal structure of this uh, planar map is, is converging uh, in uh, the scaling limit. Uh, okay, so um, the next thing I want to do uh, is to define uh, this uh, cardi embedding. Um, so our, so we are given we assume that we're given some uh, planar map. Uh, and our goal is to draw this uh, planar map uh, in some uh, conformal way uh, in the equilateral uh, triangle. Uh, so the first thing we observe uh, is that uh, such an embedding, uh, it can't be unique. Um, and the reason it can't be unique uh, is because there are several uh, conformal maps from the equilateral triangle uh, and to itself. 
Um, but if we fix uh, three points, uh, A, B, and C, uh, on the boundary of the map, and we require that these three points are mapped to the three vertices of the equilateral uh, triangle, uh, then, th then there should be a unique or approximately unique uh, conformal map. And we choose these uh, three points uh, uniformly at random. Okay, so um, okay, so now uh, we have decided uh, where to map uh, these points, uh, these vertices uh, A, B, and C. Uh, and we consider some arbitrary uh, other vertex V, uh, and we ask at which point of the equilateral triangle should we map uh, this vertex. Um, okay, so um, so the idea of uh, of the of our approach is to use uh, percolation and crossing uh, events. Um, so uh, here we consider um, uh, here we consider uh, the triangular lattice uh, with a critical percolation. Um, and we have some uh, we have some point um, x, and we consider the event that there is a blue uh, percolation crossing, which is separating a and x uh, from b and uh, c. Uh, so we have such a crossing with some probability between zero and one, um, and it follows by result of, of Smirnov uh, that if the position of x is kept fixed and we make the lattice uh, finer and finer. Uh, then the probability of having such a crossing is converging to a constant p sub a of, of x. Uh, so we can consider the exact same event uh, on the planar map. Um, so, uh, so we define p hat sub a of, of v to be the probability that we have uh, a percolation crossing separating uh, b and c from a and, and b. Uh, and we define um, p sub b and p sub c uh, in a similar way. Uh, and then when we do the embedding, uh, we choose to send uh, the vertex v to the point x of uh, the equilateral uh, triangle, such that this uh, triple of probabilities associated with x is equal to this triple of uh, probabilities uh, associated uh, with v. Uh, yeah, so that's so this is our definition of uh, of the cardi embedding. Um, so uh, next, I want to to remark that uh, that uh, uh, that our main result is actually believed to hold in a much larger generality than what we proved. Uh, so we considered a special case of uh, uniform triangulations and uh, the cardi embedding, uh, but it's believed to hold also. But the exact same result is believed to hold also in many many other settings. Uh, for example, um, instead of using uh, the cardi embedding, uh, we can consider uh, some other conformal uh, embedding. Um, and I will give you a few examples uh, in a minute. Uh, it's also possible to consider uh, planar maps with other uh, local constraints. Uh, so instead of considering uh, triangulations, we can consider quadrangulations, uh, general planar maps, uh, and so on. Uh, and by universality, uh, it is believed that, uh, that these local constraints uh, don't play any role in the limit. So if we, for example, consider a uniform quadrangulation instead, then it should give the exact same limiting object. So it's still LQG with parameter uh, gamma equal to the square root uh, of eight thirds. Um, it's also possible to consider uh, other classes of, uh, of planar maps. Uh, so we are considering uniform planar maps, so we have some, uh, some collection of planar maps, and we sample a planar map at uniform. Um, uh, but then it's also, uh, but then there are also a number of other uh, natural probability measures that one can, that one can put on, on a collection of, uh, of planar maps. Um, and it, it is believed that, um, uh, that for many other natural probability measures, what one gets in the scaling limit is still a uh, new quantum gravity. Uh, but it is legal quantum gravity with this parameter gamma is not necessarily equal uh, to the square root of, uh, of eight thirds. Um, okay, so um, so next I want to um, I want to present a few uh, a few different examples of um, uh, of discrete conformal um, embeddings. Uh, so in this slide I listed uh, four different examples. Um, so we have a circle packing. We have embedding via the uniformization theorem um, and embedding via, so we have, and we also have uh, the tuck embedding and the cardi embedding. 
so yeah, so circle packing um, is an embedding um, where each uh, vertex is associated with a circle and two circles are tangent if and only if uh, the associated vertices are connected by uh, an edge. Um, and uh, one can show that, um, so for the case of triangulations, um, which have the topology of the sphere, then uh, one can show that this circle packing is, um, uh, that it exists and that it is unique uh, up to uh, Möbius transforms. Um, yeah, so, um, uh, so Rodin and Sullivan, uh, they proved that if one consider the triangular lattice restricted to some uh, domain uh, D, uh, and then one does circle packing uh, of this lattice into uh, the unit disk. Uh, then the circle packing is converging in the scaling limit uh, to the Riemann mapping from the, this domain D uh, and to the disk. Uh, so this result uh, it is uh, suggesting, uh, so, so, it's, so it's giving some justification for, for why we consider this uh, circle packing uh, to be a discrete uh, conformal vanity. Um, okay, uh, so uh, the next example um, of a discrete conformal uh, embedding is embedding uh, using the uniformization uh, theorem. Um, so if we have some uh, planar map, for example, uh, triangulation, we can view it as a Riemannian manifold. Uh, so we can do this by equipping each face uh, with the metric uh, of the standard equilateral uh, triangle. Uh, so in other words, we consider a collection of standard equilateral uh, triangles and we glue them together uh, along their edges uh, in order to create uh, a manifold. Uh, so this will be smooth except possibly for conical singularities uh, at the vertices. Um, okay, so, um, so we have, we know that the planar map is defining, um, is defining uh, the Riemannian uh, manifold. Uh, then the uniformization theorem, uh, which is the generalization of uh, the Riemann mapping theorem, uh, is saying that if we have some uh, simply connected uh, Riemann surface, uh, then there exists a conformal map from this surface uh, to either the unit disk, uh, the complex plane, uh, or the stair. Uh, so by using this result, uh, we see that there exists uh, some conformal map uh, which takes our planar map uh, to one of these uh, three domains. Uh, okay, so uh, a third example is uh, the chat embedding. Uh, so the chat embedding is defined such that uh, the position of uh, a vertex um, is uh, the average of the position of uh, the adjacent vertices. Uh, and this exists and is unique uh, if we fix uh, the location of uh, the boundary vertices. Okay, so, uh, so then last we have uh, this cardian embedding. Um, okay, so, um, uh, so uh, Smirnov, uh, he, he proved um, conformal invariance of critical percolation on the triangular lattice. Uh, and one consequence of, of his result um, is that if we consider the triangular lattice uh, restricted to some uh, simply connected domain uh, D, um, and then we um, and then we do uh, the cardian embedding uh, of this uh, of this restricted uh, lattice. Then, as we let the lattice sites go to zero, uh, then uh, then the cardian embedding of our lattice is converging to uh, the Riemann mapping from our domain and to the equilateral uh, triangle. Uh, so this is uh, so this is uh, explaining why we are viewing this cardian embedding uh, to be uh, a discrete approximation uh, to a conformal map. Uh, to argue that uh, the chat embedding is discrete conformal, one can use a similar kind of argument, but instead of using conformal invariance of percolation, one is using conformal invariance of the simple random walk and uh, Brownian motion. Um, okay, um, so in the rest of the, the talk, uh, I will give you um, a, a few ideas of the proof. Uh, of our result. Uh, so here I just stated the result again. So we have convergence of uniform uh, triangulations under uh, the cardia embedding. Um, okay, so yeah, so this, 
uh, result is proved in uh, collaboration with uh, Shin Sun, uh, but it's based on uh, a series of works, which is also involving uh, many other people. Uh, so I will not have the chance to cover uh, all of these works. Uh, so in the rest of the talk, I will uh, mostly be focusing on, uh, on the last uh, four works. Okay. Um, yeah, so, uh, okay, so um, uh, recall that we are considering uh, a math M sub N, uh, which is a uniform triangulation uh, with N vertices and the boundary length uh, root N. Um, so such a uh, uniform triangulation, uh, it defines a, a random uh, metric mesh space. Uh, so it is a metric space uh, if, um, if we consider a rescale version of uh, the graph metric. Uh, and, we, and we choose uh, the rescaling such that the distance between adjacent vertices is n to the power minus a quarter, uh, because with this, this rescaling, uh, the diameter of the map uh, is of order one. Uh, so the map will be uh, a metric uh, mesh space uh, if we also give each vertex a mass, uh, one over n. Uh, so the Gromo has the appropriate topology. Um, it is a natural topology to consider on the space of uh, compact uh, metric mesh spaces. Uh, so it is the topology induced by the gromo hausdorff prokhorov uh, distance. Um, so this, um, uh, so the gromo hausdorff prokhorov distance is as that the distance that uh, two metric mesh spaces have distance zero if there is a mesh preserving isometry uh, between the two metric mesh spaces. And in general, it's saying how much we need to distort uh, one metric mesh space in order to get to uh, the other one. Um, okay, so uh, in the work with uh, Albank and, and Sun, uh, we show that um, our uh, uniform uh, triangulation uh, is converging for this uh, GHP topology uh, when the size uh, of the triangulation uh, is going to uh, infinity. Uh, and uh, um, yeah, so uh, remember that um, if we have some minimal quantum gravity surface, then it has uh, a metric and it has um, an, uh, and it has a measure. Uh, so in other words, if we have a minimal quantum gravity surface, then this also defines a metric mesh space. Uh, and the limiting uh, object um, is exactly uh, this metric mesh space. Um, so minimal quantum gravity surfaces with uh, parameter gamma. Uh, equal to the square root of eight thirds. Uh, they are also known as uh, Brownian surfaces. So an equivalent way to say the result is to say that uh, the uniform triangulation is converging to the Brownian disk uh, in the scaling limit. Um, yeah. So um, uh, yeah. So there are several um, uh, works, uh, uh, several closely related results, uh, which have been proved uh, in the literature earlier. Um, so uh, Lugal and Mirmont were the first to prove convergence results uh, of this type. Um, so they considered uh, the case of, uh, of planet maps with the topology of a sphere, uh, for example, the case of quadrangle relations with a uh, sphere topology. Uh, then Bettinelli and the Mirmont, they considered the case of planet maps with uh, disk topology, for example, quadrangle relations with uh, disk topology. Uh, then uh, Adario Berry and Albank and and, and Wen, uh, they um, they were uh, um, so they were studying various uh, cases where where the planar maps must have must satisfy additional constraints. Uh, for example, maps where double edges and and loops are uh, are not allowed. Uh, so all of these earlier results uh, they are based on uh, studying various uh, bijections uh, between the planar map and uh, simpler objects. Uh, and that's also the approach we use uh, in, our, in our result. Uh, so in our result, we are um, considering a bijection between uh, these uh, triangulations of the disk um, and what is called a blossoming forest. Uh, and, and this bijection is, is due to Poulalan and, uh, and Schaefer. Uh, okay, so, uh, so this is, uh, this, uh, the result stated here is the first step um, uh, of the proof. Um, but before I can continue, I, um, I will uh, instead make a very brief, um, I, I have to make a brief, um, uh, a brief introduction of SLE. Um, 
yeah, so um, SOEs, uh, they are one parameter family of uh, fractal curves uh, indexed by some parameter kappa. Uh, and I describe the scaling limit of statistical physics model. So, um, for example, um, it has been proven to describe the scaling limit of uh, the loop erased random walk. So that's um, SOE with kappa equal to two, and also interfaces in uh, the easing model. Uh, a, third, a third example uh, is the example of uh, percolation. Uh, so uh, here on so the figure, you see a critical percolation uh, on the triangular lattice. Um, and it follows by combining uh, results of uh, Stas, as the and Stas Mirov, and uh, Kamya and uh, Newman. Uh, that if we consider um, the, the, uh, the interface of critical percolation on the triangular lattice, uh, then in the scaling limit, as we make the lattice uh, finer and finer, uh, then this interface uh, is converging to an SOE with parameter six. Um, yeah, so um, so uh, so SOEs were introduced by Oda Trum uh, 20 years ago. Um, so he realized that several of the models I mentioned on, on the slide, uh, they, uh, they were conjectured uh, or they were uh, conjectured to have two properties in common uh, in the scale limit, uh, which are conformal invariance and uh, the domain Markov property. Uh, and he proved uh, that there is um, uh, that there is a one parameter family of curves uh, satisfying uh, these two properties. Uh, and that was, um, and, and he called these curves uh, SLE. Uh, okay, so, um, so in this uh, slide, um, so in the left figure, you can again see the result, um, which is that um, the percolation interface for critical percolation on the triangular lattice uh, is converging to SLE6. Uh, so in the, in the right part of the figure, instead of just considering a single percolation interface, uh, I have drawn the full collection of interfaces between blue and, uh, and yellow. Um, and it also uh, follows from uh, the results of Smirina and Kamya and, and Newman uh, that, um, that this collection of percolation interfaces, they converge to, uh, to what is known as, uh, um, as a CLE6. Uh, so a CLE6 uh, or a conformal loop ensemble, so that's uh, the loop version of SLE6. And it is a countable collection of, uh, of loops, um, such that the loops cannot cross each other, but they may be nested, and they form a dense subset uh, of the domain. Um, okay, so uh, here I have just, uh, I have first uh, stated again um, the result um, that I stated, uh, that, uh, that I showed you before, um, which is that a uniform triangulation is converging to, uh, to a level quantum gravity surface uh, as a metric uh, mesh space. Uh, so then uh, next we consider uh, a percolation uh, on the planar map. Uh, so uh, the, the boundary is colored in blue uh, and uh, the interior is colored in blue and uh, yellow uniformly at, at random. Uh, and it's possible to show that when the size of the planar map goes to infinity, uh, then one half is the critical percolation probability uh, on the planar map. Um, yeah, so, uh, so earlier we saw that the planar map uh, is a metric uh, mesh space. Uh, so when we add percolation to the planar map, then we can also draw the collection of percolation interfaces, which gives us uh, a metric uh, mesh space uh, with a collection of, of loops. Uh, and the natural analog of the gromo hausdorff prokhorov topology for metric mesh spaces with loops uh, is something we call the gromo hausdorff prokhorov loop topology. Uh, so heuristically, uh, two such objects are close. Uh, if, if the loops are close, uh, if we view them as uh, parameterized curves on this uh, metric mesh space. Um, so then we show that this um, map with percolation, uh, it is converging for this uh, GHPL topology. Uh, so we already knew earlier that, um, that the limit of the map uh, is given by, uh, by, um, 
uh, by a label quantum uh, gravity surface. Uh, so the new result um, that we also that we also can show is that uh, the limit of these percolation interfaces is converging to uh, a CLE. Uh, and this uh, CLE uh, is independent of uh, the label quantum uh, gravity surface. Uh, so, th so the limiting object can be sampled by starting out with an LQG uh, surface and then drawing an independent collection of, of loops uh, on top of the surface. Uh, so this result is building on the result of uh, Gwyn and Miller. So they approved uh, a close. Uh, so they approved a similar result um, where they where they considered SLE instead of uh, CLE. Uh, and um, then it's also based on the work of uh, work with uh, Bernardi and Son, uh, where we are uh, where where we're introducing a certain bijection, which is allowing us to iterate the result of Gwyn and Miller. Uh, so instead of considering a single percolation interface, we get the full collection of of all the population uh, interface. So um, yeah, so if we look at uh, this, um, if we look at this uh, at the second theorem, it is already uh, a rather strong convergence result for uh, so for the planar map. Uh, so it's saying that the planar map uh, is converging as a metric mesh space, and also that percolation on top of it is converging to CLE. Um, yeah, but um, but it's um, but it's also uh, a result which doesn't say much about the conformal properties uh, of the planar map. Uh, so the GHPL topology is just treating the planar map with percolation as some um, abstract metric mesh space with loops. It doesn't tell us how we should embed this this object into the complex uh, plane. Uh, so in order to uh, to prove uh, convergence of the conformal structure, we need uh, we need some new ideas, and uh, the main tool uh, we use um, is uh, is that we use uh, dynamical uh, percolation. Yeah. So I can. Okay. So I can first show you. So this is. Uh, dynamical percolation. Uh, so it is dynamical percolation on uh, on the faces of the hexagonal lattice. Uh, so each um, each face has an exponential clock, uh, and every time uh, the clock is uh, every time the clock goes on phase is ringing, then the color of that face uh, is resampled. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, in our setting, we are uh, looking at um, dynamical percolation on uh, a planar map. Uh, so, um, so each um, uh, so each vertex uh, has an exponential clock, uh, and the color is resampled when the clock is, is ringing. Uh, so, in this way, we get some dynamically changing collection of, of loops uh, on our planar map. Uh, and we can show that this dynamically changing collection of, of loops uh, it has a scaling limit, uh, which is described by a dynamically changing CLE uh, on an LQG surface. Uh, so we already knew that uh, if we consider some fixed time, uh, then we get the scaling limit, which is given by LQG with CLE on top of it. So the new result now is that we also have convergence of this, uh, of this uh, dynamic. Um, okay, so uh, so this this scaling limit is given by um, by what we call uh, so we call the, uh, the limiting process we call it uh, Lie wheel dynamical uh, percolation. Uh, so this is some uh, dynamically changing CLE, uh, which is dynamically changing by letting the loops the CLE loops merge and split. For example, at some point, so yeah, so at the figure we have here I'm considering two CLE loops just one shown in gray and one shown in blue, just to distinguish them. Uh, and then um, we have, um, uh, yeah, so uh, at some point in time, let's say, for example, that we cut the loop in, in, in orange, um, and we cut the loop in, in gray at the point marked in orange, so that this loop is splitting into two loops. At a later point in time, maybe we merge two loops as the point shown in orange, and uh, now we are back to having uh, two loops. Uh, and so on. 
So yeah, so um, so this legal dynamical percolation, uh, it is um, it is a stationary process, and one of the most uh, basic questions we can ask, or fundamental questions we can ask about the stationary process, is whether it is a gothic. Uh, and we show that it's uh, that it is mixing, uh, which means um, uh, which means in particular that it is a gothic. Uh, so to be precise, we consider two events, E1 and E2, defined in terms of some uh, CLE. Uh, and then we can show that the covariance between one of the events at time zero and the other event at time t uh, is going to, to, uh, to zero as t goes to infinity. Um, so one reason such a result is interesting is, is because it tells us how sensitive uh, the percolation model uh, is to changes. Uh, so we see that when we took uh, the scaling limit, then we rescaled uh, time by n to the power minus uh, a quarter. Uh, and so this implies that um, that unit time for the limiting process, it corresponds to time n to the power minus a quarter uh, for the discrete process. Uh, so in other words, um, if a big time c for the limiting process, it corresponds to resampling uh, a fraction c times n to the power minus a quarter of the vertices uh, for the discrete model. Um, so, so in other words, uh, just a tiny fraction uh, of the vertices in the discrete uh, model. Um, and by the mixing result, um, it follows that if we resample uh, this tiny proportion of vertices, then the limiting CLE we get is essentially independent as compared to, uh, as compared to uh, the original CLE without any resampling. Uh, so a further result we can induce from this is that if we have um, a planar map, a fixed planar map M with K-independent percolations, then this gives us uh, K-independent uh, CLEs in uh, the scaling limit. Uh, and uh, uh, so this result can be interpreted as a quenched convergence result for percolation on triangulations. So this is a stronger result than the, than the result I showed you on the previous slide, which can be interpreted as an unyield uh, result. Um, so, um, so another consequence um, is that uh, from this quenched uh, convergence result, uh, it's possible to show by uh, a law of large number argument uh, that we all also has that we also have convergence of this um, Cardi embedded uh, planar map. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that was uh, all I had today. I will stop, okay, stop sharing thanks. maybe my slides and then I can see if, if there are any more questions. Well, thank, thank you very much, uh, yeah, first thanks. of all, Nina. Um, there were actually quite a few questions that came up um, during the, the seminar. I was monitoring the, the chat box. Um, yeah. I let me just. I think most of them got answered, but let me just review a few of them. There was quite a bit of chat. Um, first of all, there was some discussion about uh, multiple functionals uh, on on percolation paths of the, the card embedding. So I suppose you had two two crossings. But I think you answered that later on in the talk because uh, you became a lot more elaborate about the kind of functionals on the embedding that you're going to consider converging. Is that is that correct? I think that was pretty much what was said in the, in the um, chat. So Maybe if you bring your slides up, it would be useful. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so there were some questions about what sort of functionals of the planar map. Yeah, so for example, I mean, so for example, the loops, the loops yeah, are a so, good example. So you get the yeah. whole thing converging. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I guess the result I stated initially, so that was actually just convergence of of the area measure and of the metric. Uh, but then uh, we can also get stronger results, um, re, uh, which, uh, which also includes convergence of, this, of the CLE uh, on top of the surface. So one way to state, uh, if I go back to, right. uh, so one, if I go back to where I stated, for example, yeah, I don't know, we can go to, Maybe this slide, for example, which is illustrating the main result. So it's also also possible in the middle. Uh, it's, it's in the middle figure. We can consider a percolation, and if we consider a percolation, we also get the, a collection of uh, of percolation cycles, which are drawn in the equilateral triangle. 
Um, and uh, so this collection of loops, we can view it as a collection of parameterized curves. Uh, for example, we can let it take a certain amount of time to cross each face. Uh, and then on, on the right, in the, on the right side of the, of the figure, we can also we can also add the CLE on top of the LQD surface, and we can also parameterize the CLE loops in some way, which are then uh, sort of reduce the parameterization, um, so that it, so that it uh, depends on on the background LQD surface, mm -hmm. and we can also get convergence of the loops in that sense. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So just about everything goes with it in the convergence. Yeah. Um, so there was also, there's quite a bit of discussion which I was struggling to understand myself and, and uh, which, do, which was to do with the circle packing. Um, yeah. uh, could, could I ask one of the people who asked this question just to rewrite the question, please? So there was some, some uncertainty about how to, to perform the circle pack, packing quite more precisely. Sorry. You mean in uh, the Rodin and Sullivan result or in uh, or for the planar maps? Uh, well, if we scroll back a bit. Yeah, I'm also not uh, sure I can, I can actually not see the chat right now. So, uh, so, so Luigi, perhaps you could repeat the question? Yes, yeah, yeah. I am mute. Sure. Yeah. So um, I was I was just asking um, how to choose the circle packing of the triangulation with boundary since it's uh, not unique. And then there was a bit of uh, back and forth in the chat. Um, we um, somehow um, we ended up thinking that um, maybe it was a good idea to do something like just add an external. Um, uh, vertex and connect it to all the boundary vertices so that the yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. So that's that's typically. So of course there are two variants, but I guess you are interested in in the disk case and not the spare case. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, so in in the disk case, that's uh, that's exactly what one uh, one typically typically does. So um, yes, so one one also has that the boundary of a disk is also a circle, which is corresponding to uh, to a circle of an extra vertex, which is connected to all the boundary vertices. Exactly. Right. Um, and then, yeah, uh, then there is not sort of one unique canonical way necessarily to define. So it's still one still doesn't have uniqueness, but there are, I mean, uh, there are a lot of different ways to do to fix the embedding sort of modulo in some natural way, which gives a non-trivial object. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, there was uh, a question uh, about the colors on page 17 but i think that was answered uh, these are just the different loops in your so slide 17 yeah just to be sure let's ask it and answer it so what are the different colors no oh i noted page 17 maybe it was this one here yes ah okay do you yeah. mean the yeah. colors They're just, yeah, yeah these are you just picked out a few loops there i presume right? yeah exactly it's just uh, yeah i just picked some random loops i guess four loops or something which okay. i yeah, are there any other questions? Thanks. Are there any other questions people want to ask? You can put your hand up if you look on the, the participants list. There's a little button on the bottom um, which you can press. Put your hand up and I'll unmute you. Otherwise, I have a question. Okay. I'm going to ask a question. Oh, no, we've got a question here. So I'm going to unmute you, Raphael. Here we go. Hi, so if I recall correctly, you said that um, there are reweightings that change the loop, uh, the loop of quantum gravity parameter, yeah. right? How well is that understood? Are there actual results about that or is that still a conjecture? Uh, yeah, so there are some results on that. Um, I guess I can go back to, uh, so at some point in the talk, I was presenting different ways in which the planar map can converge. Um, so, yeah, so a planar map can converge in, I mentioned these three different senses that it can converge in. Uh, so it's, so the first no, notion of convergence is not so well understood for non-uniform uh, planar maps. Uh, the second notion and the third one is not, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess, so I guess I can treat the second one first. So the second one, um, so the second one, uh, there are certain, uh, yeah, so, so for the second one, there are certain uh, results. 
Um, so what one what one typically does uh, in general is that one instead of letting the planar map be uniform, so we'll consider uh, planar maps such that the probability of sampling a certain map is proportional to the statistical um, to the partition function of some statistical physics model on the planar map. Uh, so therefore, it's very natural to to study these planar maps by by sampling a planar map with a statistical physics model on top of it. And uh, it turns out that there, that for several such um, maps with statistical physics models, there are natural uh, bijections. Um, uh, and, and these projections are typically encoding uh, these statistical physics observables in some nice way. Uh, and therefore, it, it is possible to, pr to prove scaling limit results and also to get, um, and also to get results. Um, and we can also interpret the limiting object in terms of LQG with, with the correct statistical physics model. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I can also mention that there are also some results on uh, on the third of uh, the third type uh, for something called um, which are for various uh, cores for planar maps that are defined by a coarse graining on of an LQG surface. Uh, so there are several results involving like Gwyn, Miller, and and Sheffield uh, on that. Okay, th thank you very much for that question. Uh, thank you, Nina. I did have a question, but I think in the interest of time, uh, we should stop. Um, let's thank uh, Nina for her talk. Um, I have seen uh, occasions where people get um, the whole lot get unmuted and everybody claps, but I'm not going to dare and <laughs> try and do that this time. Um, but so on, on behalf of everybody, thank you very much, uh, Nina. A little clap from me instead. Yeah, um, so, so let's take a two-minute pause. Uh,